Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the EGF quarterfinals. All of quarterfinals will be happening right here. Well, at least half of it, as well as on the partner stream, that being uh, EGF official. But before we get to that, I've got to introduce my co-commentator. Hello, Cheryl. Hello, I'm Cheryl or Milk Tea. Uh, glad to be here. Glad to be uh, casting all of these amazing crew battles with you. But first things first, we got to see what's coming up with Hawaii and St. Peter's. Uh, who are we going to have first? Uh? Um, so it seems for University of Hawaii, we're going to have Altair and five points for St. Peter's. Uh, a really solid matchup for these first, uh, for these leads, these starters for both squads. Uh, they're currently hopping into the arena and probably going to end up doing a quick 30 second button check just to make sure that everything is as it should be but k rule byleth is what we are expecting and that sounds like it's gonna be a tough one for k rule not gonna lie <laughs> absolutely i can imagine um you know byleth having a sword byleth has a really long sword not to mention that um but i'd love to see how um carol go against you know um something great about smash is like even though matchup is so important player skill just plays an important part as well oh yeah it's it can be a lot it can be a lot to overcome certain matchups and hence why they swing either way but the best and most important matchup in not only smash but any fighting game is the matchup against your opponent not just their character so if Hi hawaii is gonna get on to a really hot start, then k can certainly be that type of character to really build momentum for the rest of the crew, since when k wins, he wins hard. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And you know, University of Hawaii at 7th seed, St. Peter's University at 10th, those two are relative those two are relatively close in seeding, so we might see some really strong battles, some pretty close matches too. Oh yeah, I forgot to even consider seeding like both both these uh, champions both these colleges doing re relatively well in the regular season in order to get to this point and even winning a match last week to get to where we are where they are today but they got to go through each other in order to make it two semis which is going to be happening next week mm -hmm. um if we could cut to the bracket just to see where we are currently are we Look at all these players. Look at all these teams. Mm -hmm. So um, here we are at Prelim 2, University of Hawaii, St. Peter's University. Um, I believe official EGF, which is the other um, Twitch channel, is doing St. John's University in Marist. Yeah, so if you don't mind opening up a new tab, if you're computer can handle two twitch streams at once then you can pull up official egf and this stream for all of the collegiate smash action for the 2021 league championship uh, for uh, yeah four sets today oh no six sets today so plenty of uh plenty of stuff to go on and plenty to watch um, and also next week is going to be semifinals and grand finals. So be sure to tune in next week at Sunday. Yes, on Sunday, on the 25th at around 445 Eastern time to catch these amazing teams play for champions. And keep in mind that we'll also be getting two more sets. The sets that will be coming up next for that will be on this stream will be William and Mary against the University of Colorado, which you can see on uh, on your screen right now. Then we'll be ending off with Mississippi State and Quinnipiac. So a bunch of very close seeds, very close sets, I expect. And of course, all of it is very much point based, so you can't just be going off of individual players hoping to carry. Your entire team has to be ready and prepared to go into this uh, to go into their games this week this day in order to make it to next week mm -hmm. and um i believe ubl can attest to this but we've been seeing some really close some really interesting some really great matches with all of these colleges and it's nice seeing like a, a different style of um, crew battles a different style of 
um, scoring points, and just a wide range of characters from different regions. Oh yeah, they every every member on every roster, I, I believe, has played a different character for every time that I've seen it. And there is no like individual character bands. Like you could come in with, I think, with three Terry's if you wanted to. But nope, that's not how it's run. That's not how it is. Everyone's pulling out a different member of their roster and pushing to pushing to be the best with a well well rounded team as they're going to get started with that button check stage selections having been completed. Let's see. Let's see who we can hear. I definitely heard the Fire Emblem opening and that is absolutely K rule. Uh, the first stage is uh, going to be FD. The final destination is the stage that they have struck to. And now all we gotta do is wait for their preparations to be complete. Mm -hmm. And you know, these colleges are it, relatively far away from each other in proximity. Um, Hawaii and just all the way on the other side. And I'm not entirely sure geographically where St. Peter's University is, but you know, it doesn't hurt to have a, a, double, a, a button check. Um, wouldn't want to blame on lag towards the end, but you know, hearing that game sound, it seems as though we are going to be starting our match soon. So St. Peter's is a, uh, perhaps fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, uh, St. Peter's is located in New Jersey. So it's quite the, <laughs> quite the distance from Hawaii and both players are going to have to overcome that native input delay even with uh, proper LAN and good connections like there's going to be a little bit of the delay from the sheer distance mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you nintendo mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but for sure we'll be seeing a Kayla and a Byleth what are your thoughts on um, Kayla and Byleth on Final Destination on FD, it's so it's really interesting because what we usually see from Byleth is a lot of spacing, like you know, distance demon for a reason. A lot of forward air, back air. Uh, F tilt makes a huge uh, F tilt and F smash make huge uh, strides in this matchup. But K rule is built to be a kind of heavy zoner, able to take a lot of hits and utilize crown and various amounts of armor to maintain stage control. Mm -hmm. If this, know, oh, go ahead. Uh, and you, you can see Altair really starting strong, um, racking so much damage just within um, seconds of the game. Yeah, he's really trying to close the distance, not let five points utilize the sweet spots that Byleth is known for, and the jump call out immediately. Now, normally on a stage like this, you would think Byleth's uh, juggling and, uh, and combo routes, especially the vertical ones, would be all the easier, but Altair showing just how aggressive the croc can be, especially when he gets that opening, just landing for free on so much of uh, all, so much of five points is a more aggressive options. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned about five points aggressive options. Altair is really covering those spots, really trying to take advantage of whenever he goes for an attack and using that little moment to get any hit it can. And of course, um, Altair, um, King K. Rool having a reflector, which, um, you know, Violet has to be a little bit more careful for, especially with um, the bow. You know, I know it's dumb, and he's kind of getting... He, he's getting a little bit waxed right now, and you gotta at least take one stock for just for sake of keeping your team competitive. Going for the down air really early, trying to outrange the helicopter pack of uh, K King K Rule. And there we have it. Spot dodge down smash, the ultimate classic. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned something about points, and um, it's so important in this style of... Um competition because um you want to at least take some points off of your opponent make sure they don't get those three points from um, not taking any stocks but so far we're seeing five points doing so well with these down and getting that down and you're taking the stock um seems as though five points has found a way to um, go against king k Rool and it's working out so well it, no if this goes anything like the dk matchup 
then Altair can be in massive trouble as soon as he loses one interaction. As soon as he gets hit, the floodgates really start to open, and five points turns everything around after after a massive deficit. 141 starting his second uh, when uh, Altair was starting his second stock. He decided, I'm no longer going to lose. I'm no longer going to even get hit. As he unfortunately does end up losing his first stock, but a or his second stock, but a massive comeback in order to turn what looked like a big lead for the University of Hawaii into a solid start for St. Peter's. Absolutely, and not to mention how relatively fast this come this uh, game was in general. Um, Excellent play on both players. Um, in the first off, we really saw how Altair really chose the pacing um, and they had the most momentum, but um, Five Points really trying to take it back. And before we knew it, getting that absolute, um, those those really strong hits in um, the last stock. And we can see the spot dodge down smash that really turned everything around. Uh, it, as of the... Uh, it, I think it was the 11.0 buff. Uh, Byleth's down air and down smash did get even stronger. So even though that wasn't the spike hitbox, that was the quote-unquote sour spot, it certainly killed a plenty and let five points turn this game around a ton. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, Byleth's tip is incredibly powerful as we saw in the third stock. I just wasn't expecting um, five points to really get that spacing correct and taking the stock without getting any hits. Yes, untouchable. Putting the bow away. That was really subtle, but he he pulled out the uh, the fail knot and, or, and then tucked it away just to make sure he baited an option from Altair. He baited out the jump, which let him uh, let him pressure the two frame that much easier because he knew that. Uh, he knew that Altair would be coming aggressively thanks to what he chose. So very, very quick on the on the bait, and it put him into a fantastic position heading into game two. Mm -hmm. um, right now, they are, I believe they are still discussing um, matches or not, or... Um... Not yet, but um, honestly, I feel like the game could go either or, um, depending on who had uh, the most momentum, because I'm pretty sure both of them had a little bit of trouble with one another, especially um, five points in the beginning of the game, um, getting their stock taken away uh, relatively fast, and then um, Altair having a little trouble towards the end of the um, second uh, and third stock. Yeah, there's definitely stuff that you can look at from either side of like, oh, if you're from Hawaii, you're like, all right, these guys, like they, they can be really momentum heavy. So maybe you could throw in a character that is so good at shutting down momentum and just really being a uh, super controlly of the game state. Uh, you can see on their roster, there's uh, char players of characters like uh, Mr. Game and Watch and Me Gunner that can slow the pace down to a crawl and really start to control the game state. Meanwhile, if you're St. Peter's, you're feeling ecstatic. Like your guy just won after a massive, massive comeback, and he's still on the move. While it only is, uh, while both players that are coming up may be a little bit shook, you're riding high as the next St. Peter's player and as the entire St. Peter's team just on these just on the strength of that comeback. Mhm. Mm um I wouldn't be surprised to see a game 3 with these two players um based just on how close they were in the game and as you mentioned them taking advantage. Um but now they're both in the arena. We're going to be seeing yet again Kero versus uh Violet, and I'm not sure what stage we are going to yet. They're running it back to FD. So, Ooh. not really acknowledging the state of like, hey, we're not going to change our game plan. We're not going to change what we're doing. We're instead going to keep to this game plan, slow down this, slow down the game state, and hopefully Altair 
just doesn't try and do too much with any openings or risk getting caught by one of Violet's more prominent combo starters being those down tilt and neutral airs. And as we see, he's firmly planted in center stage, only giving what five points is giving up. Only taking what five points is giving up, excuse me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, after that first match, I'm sure that Altair knows what to look out for, knows some things of Violet um, that they um, have to avoid, such as spot dodging so as to not get hit by down smash, and staying not too close, um, spacing themselves a little bit better towards the edge of the stage so they don't get hit by a F smashed with uh, the tip. And up to is absolutely true there, and Altair is looking very much like he was in game one, very dominant and in control. Oh, okay, the armor did not come out yet. I thought normally Crown is a really good landing option, punches through a lot of projectiles, but not that time. The arrow is just enough. Mm -hmm. Right now we're seeing more of five points using um, Fail Not, just trying to um, stay away, not to get too close, but um, still being very wary of the reflector. The classic ledge trap comes out. Yeah, rolling isn't safe there. Five points been rolling quite a bit, but the active hitbox covers the uh, boomeranging crown. Needs this stock soon. Is he gonna go off? No, he's he's taking it slow. Ooh, even charging, catching that, um, catching Altair with an up smash. Um, really good part on five points. You know, I'm sorry, but he was charging that for a hot minute, and Altair <laughs> still jumped into it. He, he gave him that one, as, but he, as he gives, he takes, using the, the uh, K. Rule downer. He combos into basically anything he wants, and up air will certainly take the stock. Let's see what five points can do in this deficit once more. Just trying to go for a cheeky reset, but Altair not giving him anything. Mm -hmm. Lately, I've been seeing. Um, Byleth, uh, five points using Nair, which is an absolutely godlike move uh, on Violet's part. Um, but Altair, I feel like Altair has been uh, baiting it out and then punishing it with either a down smash, a down tilt, no, a down air, a down air. And all of them use that axe, which is why they're incredibly important moves to use, but a errant down smash, while it may, it may have won him a lot of momentum in the previous game, it snuffs out. Uh, it gives Altair plenty of opportunity to snuff out that stock, even as... Oh, okay. Well, he was at 96, so I guess that's death percent if you're King K rule, particularly mm -hmm. to a meaty swing like that. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, this game, too, giving Altair and University of Hawaii... Two points, just one point from uh, St. Peter. So really great job on Altair for taking back the scoreboard. But, you know, it's still only the first game. Um, but, you know, the first games are pretty important. Um, it really helps with the player morale, with the team's morality. If they can get the first couple games, um, they'll be more motivated um, as time as uh, the other players go along. But so far, these games have been so close. And Altair has been using different strategies, different methods of punishing. So five points can't usually get the down airs and um, nairs that they normally get. Yeah, he's playing this a whole lot better than game one. Kind of tone down the nerves a little bit. Just play your game and play it right. And it wins uh, University of Hawaii a, a back, back the lead a two to one. This will be a very important rubber match for the for the rest of the set even just kind of defining how the set can go can start as you mentioned as early as the first uh, as the first set between these players and they're trying to they're trying to ring it home for for their respective schools and get into the semifinals mm -hmm. and we see altair is all ready to go already in the arena just waiting for five points to make their choice we're, we're seeing us I, I think we're seeing a stage switch Mm -hmm. uh, we're not not going back to FD, despite the ladder combos that you could get with uh, Byleth's up B, the the sword crane, whatever it is uh, referred to, uh, the sword of the creator. I think it's sword called. Sword of the creator. Yeah. Ooh, smash! It's, yeah, let's go fire him with three houses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but 
FD is usually a pretty good stage for Byleth. Uh, they have a lot of space to move, a lot of space to anti-air, which this character does super well. But it looked like uh, it looked like Altier just was so comfortable on FD. This is the reason he counterpicked there. So a stage swap stage swap is in order, and that's exactly what Five Points decides to do. Kalos is the pick. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on the switch to FD and Kalos? Very similar stages <laughs> in a lot of ways. Um, however, there's a couple key differences that Kalos provides, namely uh, walls. Walls are really good, uh, particularly with a particularly for characters with strong down airs like uh, Violet, since there's a there's an angle that you can follow for a very linear recoveries that like what uh, K rule is provide like what K rule has. Uh, he can ride five points can ride along the wall and get more edge guards in that sense because he's forcing wider angles from uh from altair on top of the sort of the creator having the ability to latch into walls and provide an extra boost which can be used defensively and offensively mm -hmm. um but now heading to game three changing the scenery a little bit we're now at <laughs> it called out absolutely called out <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah as i mentioned in the first game um um king k rules reflector is something to be feared and re and respected just as much even though it can break if you're that far off um it'll be really hard to shield it or um, not get hit by the reflection yeah dude. You always have to be careful with the belly armor, particularly against Violet's more uh, damaging moves. That back air at its sweet spot certainly will do plenty of damage to the belly armor. But if this game keeps going like game two, then we might see a very, very quick game three and an even wider lead for University of Hawaii. But not a five points event has anything to say about it. But he's got to be careful with these Ooh. boomeranging crowns. He's been hit by so many. Mm -hmm. Um absolutely just being hit by so many i've been seeing five points recently doing a lot of nares to um to like get close and get up close and personal to altair but altair is just avoiding it by simply shielding and following it up with a back air or a fair so that um they can da get some damage off of five points Ooh. Wow, he was trying his best to read spot dodge, like, but the hard callouts only come when you condition them properly, and it looks like five points, while he's swinging, not haphazardly, he's not doing the he's not doing the work beforehand to make those hard reads and make these uh, make these kills happen. Like he's instead just looking for something that Altier might do instead of what he's actually doing. Still, that edge guard, very, very clutch, needs to needs to put on even more damage if he wants to even this game back up, but, oh, the blunderbuss. Mm, might I mention that that edge guard was actually really great on five points um, part, considering that they I don't think they have done one of those moves off stage, so it probably took Altair um, by shock, because um, completely out of uh, character, per se. Yeah, I mean, when you show when it's the time, it's really the time to pull out your least used options when uh, the set is on the line. Uh, still not deciding to go off when he doesn't have to. Mm -hmm. So many nares that um, Altair is understanding and um, trying to um, punish right off. Right, the cannon block is traveling plenty fine. The active hitbox of the Nair it does uh, climb with the crown, so plenty of plenty of space on the, is provided. The trade spot dodge reads. <laughs> the one definitely does a whole lot more shield damage than the other. Alte has to be careful with how small his shield is, and as you see, taken taken to the platform, taken to the skies, and his shield is back at full, ready to block another attack and properly punish. Mm -hmm. We see five points commit to so many smash attacks that has gotten them um, punished. Um, well, um, in that one in particular, it didn't exactly happen, but we've seen so many times five points using down smash or fair, or I mean F smash 
um, and um, Altair just catching it with e with different aerials or tilts. He nares. He nares out of shield every time. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you've been you've been pointing this out a, a plenty, but it's it's something that Altair is now perfectly capable of punishing because he knows as soon as his shield gets touched, a nair is going to come out, and Kero Hat does have safe on hit or safe on shield moves that he can use to properly punish, but. Landing with the shield, caught out by the cable dash grab. True punish into up tilt. That's another two points for Hawaii and a bonus for winning the set on top of it all. A great start from University of Hawaii and great start from Altair. Absolutely. Um, starting um, University of Hawaii already at six points um, as opposed to St. Peter's, Universe Peter's University's one point of course still the first game but still an astounding lead already so early in the set and, and there's so much that like so much that could have been in that game uh, plenty of instances of man you, like if you hold shield for a little bit longer like that stock doesn't fall like if you like if you try and do a couple of different things and different situations like so much there's so much of what could have been, but instead we're looking at what is the five points not going off stage and looking for edge guards on K rule really is the difference. While the, playing neutral was really back and forth in so many ways, um, five points not able to secure those kills on a heavier character kind of spelled defeat in the end. Mm hmm. Um, well, moving on to our next match, which we don't know who's playing just yet. So we're just gonna wait for that.